Hello everyone and welcome to Summit Church's online worship. Uh, we are here uh, broadcasting live or broadcasting uh, and taping from uh, the sanctuary of Summit United Methodist Church and we're glad you're here uh, from wherever you're watching this and from wherever you are worshiping. Remember that wherever you are that is your worship space and you are able to worship from there. And so we're glad you're here to worship with us. Um, if you are uh, a first-time view viewer, uh, welcome. And uh, we're just uh, excited that, that you have joined us uh, for this worship service. Um, you will note that in, um, in the comments section, uh, you will see the uh, worship guide with uh, links to particular uh, music, particular songs that we have selected. Uh, they are YouTube videos. Um, and so at the, at the appropriate time, you can um, click on those links, pause your, this video, click on those links, and listen to the music, and then come back and resume uh, this particular video. I uh, do we'll call your attention to a couple of announcements or things that are happening in the life of, of this congregation. Uh, please remember that the pastor's chat continues on Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. as we continue our conversation about uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, also, we are still collecting items to help our neighbors at the uh, Erie United Methodist Alliance, uh, the refuge. We are collecting masks and we are collecting paper towels as, as well as hand sanitizers and hand lotion. So if you have any of those items, available that you can donate. There is a donation bin uh, outside of our main doors and you can drop them off there at any time and they will be collected and uh, delivered to the refuge by our staff. Uh, also a reminder that there are still openings. There are five openings for the women's spiritual retreat that takes place in October. Uh, please contact Connie if you wish to sign up for that um, and please do so as soon as possible. Also, you'll note in your worship guide, there is an order form for geranium orders. If you wish to order some geraniums for Pentecost, uh, they will decorate our sanctuary space here, and then they will be taken outside and planted to uh, <clears throat> uh, planted throughout the churchyard. So uh, if you would like to contribute those, uh, please, uh, please fill out the form or contact Darlene Smith. And... Um, one other announcement regarding reopening of the church. I know some of you have asked when we are going to reopen, um, and I need to let you know that the earliest that we can open will be June, the beginning of June, uh, provided we have uh, uh, moved into another phase. We're in the yellow phase now, but we are still limited to the number of people that we can um, have in one, one location. And uh, so we want to wait until we can gather more people and even then when we open up in the beginning of June and again this is just an estimate right now it may be later we even then though there will be restrictions there will still be social distancing and therefore there will be uh, different guidelines and uh, worship will look a little bit different and so we will uh, keep you informed of the details as we as a leadership team and myself are developing a reopening plan and we will communicate that to you as we get closer to a time when we know we can indeed reopen. So please stay tuned for those details. Please know that wherever you are, you can make that your worship space. You can make your home your worship space as you uh, view this video and worship with us online. Um, you can, again, make your living room, your, your study, your office. You can make that a worship space. And so now... Wherever you are at this time, I am grateful for your presence as you're worshiping with us, whether it's morning or afternoon or evening. And my prayer is that during this particular time, your worries will give way to peace and your doubts will be changed to hope. And may your anxious thoughts and feelings turn to rejoicing in the Lord our God. Let us be reminded that he holds the whole world in his hands. Let us worship God. And now I invite you to pause this video as you click on the link for one of the first two songs, either Your Grace is Enough by Chris Tomlin 
or Great is Thy Faithfulness by Maranatha, uh, Maranatha Music. And then when you are finished listening to those songs, you can return and resume this video. Good morning, everyone. Let us join together in the centering prayer. We take this time to thank you, God. Thank you for your love that lasts forever. Thank you for your touch upon our lives and teaching us to rest in you. We have been through another week that has been full for some and empty for others. Yet we all come here to seek what only you can provide, Lord. May we experience your peace in our lives and always know that you are present with us. May our time of worship bring honor and praise to you. Amen. And now I want to um, let you know of joys and concerns that are happening um, that, have, that have been raised for your uh, prayers. First of all, um, a praise for moms, and we will be doing a Mother's Day litany in a, just a few minutes. We also have a praise for the faithfulness and commitment of, Summit, of the Summit Congregation in all the ways that you have helped uh, Yuma, in the ways that you have helped the church, in the ways that you have been there for each other. And we pray for the medical professionals and healthcare workers and frontline workers and all that are risking their own lives for the well-being of the community. We also pray for those who are stocking shelves and driving to other different kinds of jobs so that we can um, continue with our lives with as little inconvenience as possible. We also pray for the Yuma staff and clients also prayers for um, friends and relatives isolated in assisted, assisted living homes and uh, nursing care facilities. And also prayers for the congregation to continue to be the light of Christ to the world. We also have a prayer concern for Roger Laurie, who is recovering at home from a massive stroke. Let us join together in the Mother's Day Litany. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank you, God, for our mothers, for those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly on earth, here on earth. Thank you, God, for mothers of the past, for every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. Thank you, God, for mothers of today, for those women who are on the front lines of this pandemic, putting their lives at risk every day. Thank you, God, for mothers who go above and beyond the call of duty, for all the women expecting that are not quite mothers yet. Thank you, God, for soon-to-be mothers, for the women who took on others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank you, God, for mothers with hearts so big, for those women who have lost a child and must carry on. Thank you, God, for mothers so strong, for those women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but instead function as mothers to us. Thank you, God, for mothers in spirit. We thank you, thank Lord, you, Lord, for, for the, the women, women who have, have influenced our lives in so, so many ways. ways. We, we pray, pray that, that we will honor, honor them in everything, everything we do. We do. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together for the Mother's Day prayer and the pastoral prayer. Let us pray. O oh, holy and living God, we thank you and praise you for mothers, for mothers of all kinds, for those who have been mothers to us, through the years, for our mothers who have raised us the, 
with all, with all that they had in them to do that. Lord, we thank you for mothers who adopt and who foster children, for the love that they have in their hearts. We pray that you would be with those who want to be mothers and are having a hard time doing so. And we thank you and praise you and pray that you would be with those who are pregnant now during this pandemic, that they would have healthy children. Lord God, we praise you and thank you for bringing us all here to worship you. We praise you and bring you glory, want to bring you glory in our lives. And so help us, Lord, to honor you in all that we say and do and think, that we would be your children and that we would bring your word to all those whom we meet. Lord God, we know that this is a difficult time for many. We pray for those who are ill and pray that you will be with them and bring them to health. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19, that, that a cure would soon come and a vaccine would, would soon made, be made available as soon as possible. And we pray for all those families who mourn the loss of loved ones who they have lost through COVID-19 or other illnesses. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are in nursing homes and assisted living care facilities. We pray for those who cannot be visited and are lonely. We pray for those who live alone and feel lonely. Lord God, we love you and praise you and thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died that we might have eternal life and forgiveness from sin. We thank you and praise you for his sacrifice for us. Lord God, we offer ourselves to you, body, mind, and spirit. We turn our whole selves to you, wanting you to love us and guide us and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. We know your love. Let us listen to your words and your discernment. And so, Lord, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I would let, like to invite you for the offering. We cannot gather in one location this morning, we're but we are still the church. The work of the church does not stop. In fact, our communities and the world need the church and the love of Jesus Christ now more than ever. Our faithful financial support is also critical at this time. Please continue your regular patterns of giving as much as possible. You can do so by making your contributions online through either our church app or the church website, and you may also mail your contributions to the church office. Let us pray over the offering. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you have given us, and we give to you out of the bounty that you have blessed us with. Please accept these gifts and put them to work to build your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I would invite the children to come and, sit and um, get up closer so that they're able to see the children's message.
before the children's message, I would like you to um, pause this video and go to the song on, in the comment section, The Heart of Worship by Matt Redman. And when you come back, children gather around for the children's message. For me, it's one of my favorite activities is to ride my bike. Where do you like to ride your bike? In your neighborhood? Maybe in your driveway? I'll tell you where I like to ride my bike. I like to go to some of the state parks and some of the trails that are available, like around Presque Isle or state parks and other places in our state, and ride on those trails. It's very relaxing for me, and it gives me my, the exercise that I need. I love riding bikes. I've been riding bikes, I've rode bikes with my children when they were growing up, and now even when my children are, are grown up, I ride bikes, Pastor Connie and I ride bikes together. But I wanted to ask you something about riding bikes if you're a bike rider. So what are some of the things you have to do to ride your bike? Obviously you have to put your helmet on, always wear your helmet for your own safety. What else must you do when you ride your bike? You need to follow the rules. You need to follow the rules of the road or the trail that you're on. Ride on the right. Pass on the left, but let people know that you're passing. And you need to always be mindful of other people around you and watch where you're going and stop when there's a stop sign. But here's something else you need to be mindful of. What happens when you're riding your bike, and I'm going to demonstrate this, I think, if you ride your bike, let's say, and you are looking down at the wheel while you're riding, what's going to happen? You're going to go off course. You're gonna go off to the left or to the right, and you might end up in a ditch or off to the side of the road. You know, one of my favorite places to ride is around lakes. If I go off to the right or the left, I might end up in the lake. So you don't want to look down. What happens if you look back? You say you're riding your bike and the whole time you're looking back like this. Well, the same thing's going to happen. You're going to go off course. Or you might even fall. And you might end up in the ditch or in the lake, or the river, or wherever it is, whatever it is beside the trail that you're riding on. So where should you look when you're riding your bike? You should always look straight ahead, just as I'm doing right now. Well, actually, I'm not looking straight ahead because I'm looking at the camera so you can see me, but I should be looking straight ahead where I'm going. Always look ahead where you're going. And that's one of the things that the Bible tells us is that we need to always be looking straight ahead. Don't look back. Look straight ahead at where God is leading you. Look at the things of God. Look towards Jesus. Always keep your eyes upon Jesus so that you know where you need to go. Now, how do you keep your eyes upon Jesus? Well, the Apostle Paul says, us, says to us, one way to do that is to pray to pray and talk to God. And when you do that, it'll help you to keep your eyes on Jesus and keep your eyes straight ahead on where God wants you to go. And that's our message for uh, today. So let's, let's pray. God, I thank you for uh, children. I thank you for bicycles. And I thank you for trails that we can ride on and different ways in which we can get our exercise. Thank you for all the safety features that we have available to us. But most of all, God, I thank you for Jesus. That you have brought Jesus into our lives and that through Jesus, if we keep our eyes upon Jesus, that we can indeed do the things that you want us to do and that you guide us by your spirit. 
We thank you, that God, that we can pray, that we can talk to you, so that it might help us keep our eyes upon Jesus. We are grateful for that, God. And so I pray that you might be with all the children who are watching us right now, and all the children from our congregation, from our community, and around the world, that you might protect them, that you might keep them safe, and that they might always look ahead to you. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the, the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Listen for the word of the Lord for you today. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. came on suddenly, or at least it seemed that way to me. Maybe it wasn't so sudden. There I was, sitting at my desk here at the church office, working on a report that was due very soon. It was one of those mandatory reports, when my phone rings, and it's Connie on the other end, informing me that there's a problem with her car. It's making a strange noise, and it needs to go to the garage. And on that same phone call, she tells me, oh, by the way, we just received a, a bill from, from the doctor, and it's much higher than we thought it would be. Okay, so now I have to worry about how much is the, are the car repairs going to cost? How are we going to pay for this doctor's bill? And as I get back to my report, suddenly I remember a couple of additional items that have to be added to my weekly to-do list, which is already way too long. And so I pull out my to-do list and I add these items, and I realize that there is absolutely no way that I'm going to finish those items, those tasks, in the time that I had expected to finish them this week. So I need to prioritize. I need to make some choices. Well, I get back to my report after that, and I continue working on this report that, oh, by the way, is due very soon. Did I mention that? And it's a mandatory report. My, the, the alarm on my phone goes off, reminding me that I, I need to be Within a half hour, I need to be at a meeting off-site on the other end of town. 
so I've got a half, I have a half hour to get there. I hurry up and grab my things and get in my car and off to my meeting I go. Well, the meeting lasts about an hour and I get back in the car, but while I'm walking back to the car, I check my phone because there are some voicemail messages on my phone that had come in during that meeting. And I find out that a couple of them I, have, I need to return those calls. But while I have my phone out, it's almost as if I do it out of instinct. I have my phone in my hand. I check the news app to see what's going on. And I find out, they remind, the news app reminds me that it's flu season. A lot of people are getting sick. And the stock market is going down. Now I begin to worry and think about what's going to happen to my retirement account. Am I going to be able to retire when I had planned to retire? And as I get back in my car and head back to the office, I find myself in the midst of a traffic jam. Did I mention I have to get that report completed? It's due today, actually. Well, I finally get back to the office and start working on that report again. That is due today. And then I remember, oh, I still have some work to do on this week's message on the sermon. And I have some more preparation to, to complete prior to worship. Okay, well, I'll take care of that tomorrow. And then I look at my calendar and I realize that I will be out of the office tomorrow at another all-day off-site meeting. And I also remember I have some personal tasks that I need to take care of, and there are a few visits that have to be completed. And it begins to creep in. Maybe it was there all along, but it feels like it's creeping into my life. Anxiety. I'm beginning to feel very anxious about all these things that I've got to do or that are happening that I have no control over, like the stock market or people getting sick. And that anxiety continues to creep into my life and I think, you know, just one more thing. If there's just one more thing, I'm bound to lose it. And when I do, I'll make these irrational statements. Like, I'll never be ready by Sunday. Or I'll never be able to retire. What's happening here is I begin to have all these negative thoughts in my heart, in my mind. Has that ever happened to you? Now, I'm not talking about what's been happening in the last two months. This scenario that I just described to you happened over a year ago. And it's happened several times before that and it hap it's happened several times after that. You know what happened? I forgot to trust in God. I forgot to keep myself focused on God. Instead, I focused on all of these things that I felt I had to do. What are you anxious about these days? I know, I know. That's a loaded question. You know, as we sit here these last two months in the midst of, of, of a pandemic, as we are, are staying at home and, and, and worried about people's health and worried about the stock market and, and worried about employment or lack of employment. Lots of things to worry about. And all our worries are compounded by this pandemic. It's enough to give us all this chicken little syndrome. You ever heard of chicken little syndrome? Some of you may have. It's a story that, that has gone around for, for years and it and it's, takes place in several different versions. Some versions have you know, they all have an animal in there, and some versions 
it's a rabbit, in other versions it's a chicken, and there may be other animals that are involved. But let's say in the version that I'm going to tell you about, it's a chicken, because after all, it's called Chicken Little Syn Syndrome. And the chicken is walking along the road when suddenly an acorn falls upon its head. And the chicken cries out, the sky is falling! And she tells her friends. And they get into a panic and fear because the sky is falling. Does it ever feel like that to you? I'm sure it does in these days of pandemic. However, it happens to us whether there's a pandemic or not. We get worried and, and we get anxious about all the things that, that need to happen or that we need to take care of or that we have no control over and we do feel often that the sky is falling. You know, anxiety is this feeling of nervousness or, or, or worry or unease about events and the outcomes or perceived outcomes of those events. And sometimes that worry can lead to irrational or compulsive behavior, and I know a little bit about that because I've experienced that. But for others, it may translate into a panic attack. Now, let's be clear here. When I'm talking about anxiousness and anxiety, I'm not talking about um, a medical condition. I'm talking about the everyday worries and anxieties that we all have because of our jobs or because of our families, because we have too much to do or too many places to be. This anxiety kind of works inside of you and it churns and it, sometimes it causes physical symptoms as well. It has this physical effects from, from producing more gray hairs maybe to ulcers or even sleepless nights and compromised immune systems. You see, one of the problems is we're letting this noise of our daily lives drown out the Spirit of God. So as disciples of Jesus Christ, let's not fall into that temptation. Let's not let statistics and information that bombards us fill our minds Instead, let us train our minds on Christ. Now, I know it's important to listen to, to um, and, and I firmly believe that, to listen to the experts and you know, to make sure that we're safe, to do all the things that we're asked to do, like social distancing and wearing masks and, and uh, going out only if it's necessary. I understand that, and I agree with that. But let's not let that... that um, <clears throat> fuel our anxieties and let's not let it <clears throat> impede or drown out the spirit of God in our lives you know our generation isn't the only generation that suffers from all this nervousness and anxiety in the first century especially those first century Christians there was a lot of anxiety among them Sure, they didn't have to worry about the stock market or some of the things that we have to worry about today. But they had, did have some very important concerns. They were concerned about food and shelter for their families. They were concerned about work. And on top of all that, especially in this letter to the Philippians that Paul wrote, the Philippians are living in this pagan culture where there are so many pagan gods And, the, and these pagan gods are, are um, <clears throat> putting fear into people for the things they're doing or the things they're not doing. But the worst part of it was that these new Christians were in the midst of, of fear because of persecution. And they, they had this, this anxiety because of persecution and because... They could face death because of it, because of their faith. So Paul writes this letter to them. He has some guiding principles for them to overcome this. 
Now, Paul, of all people, should know. In fact, he's writing from his own experiences. We'll call it the school of hard knocks. Here is Paul. He's in prison. If anybody has anything to worry about, it should be him. His life is in danger. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him. But he assures the Philippians that he has this peace, this peace that only, can only come from God. And he encourages, encourages them to live by that peace and to gain that peace as well. And so he gives them these guiding principles that, that, that Connie already read for you, but let me just reiterate some of the things he says. He says in, in verse 4, rejoice, be gentle. Let it be known that you're gentle and pray. And let the peace of God into your lives. Dwell in something higher than what you're currently focusing on. You see, Paul's concerned about the, the Philippian mindset, and so he gives him these instructions. He says, rejoice in God. Don't let your anxiety stop you from that. In fact, rejoice in God, and it will help you overcome your anxieties. So, how are your anxieties holding you back from your life in Christ today? Leonard Sweet, in his book, The Soul Cafe, says there are many distractions that keep us from this experiencing this full life in God. And three of them that he mentions are hurry, worry, and slurry. They keep us from putting the kingdom of God first in our lives. You know, we have this tendency to hurry and we want to go in 20 different directions as fast as we can because we want to get so much accomplished. But the problem with that, it disconnects us from other people. And worse, it disconnects us from God because all we're thinking about is ourselves and the things that we have to accomplish instead of focusing on the things of God. And worry adds to that because we, we in worry our intention spirals inward. And we're concerned about our own well-being and, and our own lives and we forget to be concerned about others. We disconnect and we let this worry consume us so much that we too suffer from this chicken little syndrome. We yell, the sky is falling because we've taken our eyes off of Jesus. And then there is slurry. All these things muddy up our perspective. They cloud our vision. And especially when we're so focused on all the mores. More of our desires, more of our needs, more of our wants, more to do lists, more tasks. And we get, forget to focus on God. We forget to turn our eyes on Jesus. Maybe if you're task-oriented and you have all these to-do lists like me, maybe the first thing you should have on your task list is to turn your eyes upon Jesus. One of the things that happens is we let things spiral out of control. There was, once, there was a Quaker story about a king who wanted a, a count of all the flowers in his kingdom. So he hired a census worker. And he asked the census worker to go through the kingdom and count all the flowers. But then the king realized that he needed something to compare that to. So he hired a second census worker and asked him to count all the weeds in the kingdom. And they came back after they finished their task. And the first census worker, the one that counted the flowers, said to the king, Oh, king, please don't ever transfer me out of this beautiful kingdom with these countless, beautiful, wonderful flowers. Please let me stay here. This is so wonderful. The second one came back and said, King, this is an awful place, overrun with weeds. It's ugly. I've never seen anything like it. I want out. 
You see, in our lives, the things that we focus on shape our attitudes. If we focus on the beautiful things, the wonderful things, it'll shape our attitude into a positive attitude. If we focus on God, it will shape and train our minds to holy things. But if we focus on the bad, and we focus on the ugly, and we focus on, on the negative, it'll shape our attitude into a negative attitude as well. Paul wants to awaken us. And he wants to let us know that we can't let our anxieties rule our lives. Because if we do, then we can't be agents of God's grace in the world. So Paul says, begin by celebrating. That's what he means by rejoice. Celebrate God. Celebrate who God is and what God has done in your lives. Even in the midst of frustrations, even in the midst of anxieties, even in the midst of your worries. Paul, of all people, should know. He is in prison. He, is, he might be fearing for his life. He doesn't know what's going on. But he's celebrating God. He's celebrating God's work in his life. He says, we're not made for hurry, worry, and slurry. That's my take on it. We're not made for anxiety. We're made to celebrate God, to rejoice in God. You see, Paul wants us to focus on the things that last, the things that are eternal, not the things that are temporary or short-lived. And most of the things in our lives today, the things that we worry about, are temporary. But the things of God are eternal. And that's what Paul wants us to focus on, and that's what Paul wants us to celebrate and he says, in the midst of your anxieties, pray. Because this prayer will help you to focus on God. Especially if you pray and are thankful for all that God has done. And remember to be thankful. That is about celebrating God. We all know that God will answer our prayers. Not necessarily to meet what we want, but God will meet our needs. And in this case, Paul says, God will give us that peace. God will change our hearts, our minds, and our lives and give us that peace. And for that, we can celebrate God. It's not a cure, it's not a medicine, but it's God's solution to give us that eternal peace. So keep your mind and your heart and your eyes focused on Christ. You know, this is a great gift. No matter what we're going through, whether we're worried about a, an exam that we have to take or a project we have to complete at work or uh, a relative's illness um, or a job situation or our finances, our retirement, whatever it is that we're anxious and worried about, Paul says, turn your focus on God, and that will give you a sense of peace. Turn to what is timeless, what lasts, because that is what counts. And so he says, celebrate or rejoice. Your prayers can overcome anxieties so that you can celebrate. Take on the patterns that celebrate God in your life. Because that will train your minds. That will help you to focus. That will help you to have a positive attitude. Let your lifestyle embody the gospel, he says. Focus on the wonderful things of God as opposed to your worries and your anxieties. Feed your mind 
with the things of God. Train your mind with the things of God instead of the things of this world. Don't be anxious, but turn your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. And I invite you to pause this, this video and uh, click on the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus by Sovereign Grace Music. And then when you return, you can resume the video for uh, one uh, final announcement and then the benediction. So the one final announcement is, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we are looking at ho hopefully opening sometime in, in June. Hopefully it'll be closer to the beginning of June, but we don't know that yet. But one of the things we do know is that we need to continue to provide these online worship services. We need to continue to videotape what we're doing, whether we're doing this in an empty sanctuary or whether we're doing this with people here. And so um, we are looking at some video equipment to help us to do that, some lower cost video equipment, um, but that will do the job for us. And so if you know anything about uh, videotaping or videography, um, I ask that you contact me because I'm looking for some advice on some equipment that I'm considering uh, purchasing for us, but I would like some advice for, from others. And if you are interested in helping out with that and helping out with the videotaping, please contact me. You can either call me, my phone number is in the directory, or you can text me, or you can email me, and I will be sure to get back to you. And now here's Connie for the benediction. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like a starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like a river runs to ocean, our God is our home evermore. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. And may you go in peace. Amen.